Well, hi, howdy everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by me, Jack, here at VintageElectronicsGeek.com. I am your host and I am your self-proclaimed camera king. That's right. I am the undisputed camera king. In today's video, I'm going to do a uh, overview and we're going to call this part one because there's going to be multiple parts to this uh, series. And I'm not sure when I'm going to get to the others, but we will. I needed to access an area where I, I house some of my cameras and I had to move them out of the way. And I figured, hey, before I put them back up, let's go ahead and do a video on them. And so that's essentially what today's video is all about. Today's video is not going to be a demo of them or a tour over them. It's just going to be, here's what's in my camera collection. Now I have stated at the beginning of this preamble as well as in a previous video that I am the undisputed self-proclaimed camera king. And this is very true. There's nobody else in this household that will dispute that fact. And I got to tell you, in my, my uh, tours around the internet or around YouTube or whatever, I don't think I've came across anybody else who has as much gear as I do outside of museums. So I'm not going to include museums. I'm just going to include private parties because, hey, that's what I am. I am a private party. Not only that, I am the self-proclaimed private party. There you go. There are two other people that on YouTube that comes close. And we do co-sub to each other's channel. Uh, first person for video is Low Budget Productions. He has a lot of video cameras. I would strongly recommend you go and not only check out his channel, but subscribe to his channel. I'm sure he would appreciate it very much. And while you're there, tell him Jack sent you. The other person that comes close is with um, steel cameras. Uh, almost lost my train of thought there. Anyway, his camera, his camera, his YouTube channel is called Vintage Cameras. His name is Alec. He's out of Lithuania. Really super cool guy. Now both of these guys are really crafty and they know how to repair stuff better than I do. Very good. Again with vintage cameras I would strongly recommend you subscribe to his channel. Super duper cool guy and um, awesome collection. Again tell him Jack sent you. I will have links to both of their YouTube channels down below in the description so by gum by golly please check that out. A few of these cameras that I show you I may have already displayed in some form or fashion. I don't know. I'm just going to pillage and pour forward, go forward with what I have. And you're just going to have to learn to live with if you've seen doublers or not. This one I know we have seen in a previous video because we tried to reskin it and that was a big failure. This camera is a Olympus E20N and it is a Nancy. This is a 5 megapixel camera and in its day it was a phenomenal camera. It was a very expensive camera. Now they can be had relatively cheap. I had this on my want list for a couple of years and uh, well a couple of years ago I finally got one. I have not had a chance to take it out and shoot it outside of in my office and in the house uh, outside in the yard and amazing camera I love it here I'm sporting it with a battery um, grip along with a working battery and these batteries are just as rare as finding uh, oh what do you say Keith from uh, Guppies. I don't know. This camera here is a No Pro. That's right, a No Pro. Not a GoPro, but a No Pro. It is a SJ Cam, SJ4000, with Wi Fi. This is a sports camera, and I use this in my automobile bubble. Since I don't do sports, I clip this on the uh, windshield and uh, use it as a, a car cam. I've used this on several of my trips and it's a really cool camera, but you just got to understand when you're doing Wi-Fi to your cell phone, it is a different view, a different perspective 
than if you just set it up without the Wi-Fi. I learned that the hard way on my big trip, my big vacation this year uh, of 2017, and that's why I didn't include really any video from this camera because when you think you got it aimed one way, it's actually aiming another. Practically all the video from that in that uh, configuration was, uh, was uh, scrubbed. It's a really cool camera. I do like it. One thing I don't like about it though is I don't like the battery port. It kind of sucks. kind of hard to get the door on and off. And secondly, when you pull the battery from this, you lose your date and time. And that really, really sucks. Because I, I really hate to have to set the calendar every single time I change the battery. So I don't use it as much as I, I would like to um, off the battery. Uh, it's primarily used off the cigarette lighter port. And I keep it clipped to, uh, clip to this. as such. It is a uh, really fantastic camera and one day I will do a review on it. The next camera coming up is this Panasonic. Now I wanted to show you this in its bag. Uh, speaking of bags, I do want to declare that all the cameras that you have seen and are going to see, I do have bags for them with them. So it takes up a lot of real estate. Just keep that in mind when you collect cameras and if you collect them in their bags or place them in bags, lots and lots of real estate. I wanted to show you this bag with this camera because in this bag, with this bag and its contents is an extremely, extremely rare camera, an extremely valuable camera. This camera is so rare, I cannot find another example of this camera. I cannot find an example of an advertisement of this camera. That's how rare this camera is. Now I can find cameras that are similar to it, primarily out of uh, Germany, but there's a couple of unique characteristics of this camera that makes it rather rare. Now that's not to say that this is the only camera in the entire world that exists, because that's probably not a true statement, but all I'm saying is in the time frame that I've owned this camera, I've never seen another. Ever. So the bag is just as rare, I do believe, as the camera because I've not seen another camera bag. Anyway, as stated, it is a Panasonic. This camera is from uh, early, either like 1990 or 89. I'd have to go back and do research. When I do, when I actually sit down and I'm able to do a review of the cameras themselves, I'll get you exclusive dates and all that good junk. And yes, it's an ugly, hideous color. But that's what makes this camera as rare as it is. I could find these cameras in black, but I cannot find it in this color. And looks like I'm going to need to come in and clean this up. I have not detailed this camera yet. So this camera is a Panasonic model number model number something I'll tell you here in just a moment but you also notice we have uh, Japanese Chinese writing character Asian characters how's that and it's fuzzy I think the sticker is also something else that I've not seen on this camera Somebody has taken the liberty to write in pen what these features do. When I clean this up, I will remove that uh, writing. Okay, model number NVS1. NVS1. Again, you will find these cameras, but you'll find them in black. And here's another reason why this camera is so rare. Right here. SVHSC. That S right there. 
is what makes this camera awfully, awfully rare. It is a VHS-C camera though. I shouldn't say though, it is. This camera works. I do have a tape that came out of this camera, so at a later time I'll do a lost and found video from this camera. Metal microphone screen, so that is very cool. Now to show you what else is in this bag, and then uh, we'll move on. I won't show you everything, but I'll show you most of it. This right here. The book. It's in beautiful condition. The spine, there's no, no breakdown of the spine. I'm not, I'm not going to open it up all the way. Look how beautiful the ink is on that. That is just amazing. And the spine. Alex, I'm sure you're, you're digging this. Let me just open this up to anywhere. And that's as far as I'm going to go with the book. There is absolutely no English in this book. Isn't that beautiful? The receipt. This is on uh, not the camera, unfortunately. But it's on what's in this bag. which are two new batteries. I doubt they work. All right, the next camera up is a Sony DCR-TRV70. This is a uh, mini DV camera. I've actually used this camera. This is a really, really cool camera. I've only used it one time. I do need to um, review it and uh, use it. You stick the card there. It's got uh, a shoe up here and a built-in flash. Not for video, but for still photography. And it does a decent, decent job with that. And as you see, a ring that actually works. It's a 2.11 megapixel camera, video, uh, still camera. This camera here is a Sony MVC-CD500. It is a Sony Mavica camera. And this camera writes to CD. They made several versions of this, 2 meg, or was it 3, 4, and 5 meg, something like that. I've not owned the other ones, but uh, this one here. And i got to tell you, this is an amazing camera. I love this camera. I haven't used it a lot. I haven't used it in quite some time. But the thing just feels really good in the hand. You can see it's nice and meaty. Flash, full manual. Um, focusing is full manual. It is just uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal camera. And with this camera and all Sony cameras that require CDs, they say it's recommended to use their brand CDs. And I could tell you firsthand, <laughs> you better believe that. I had one that I stuck an off-brand CD in and it took me a better part of a year to finally retrieve it and I came just moments away from 
tearing it apart, tearing it up just to get my disc. But luckily I didn't have to. In my collection, you're going to find that I have a lot of Mavicas. I love Mavica cameras. And I also have a lot of Olympic, Olympia Comedia cameras. And I love those things. Those are phenomenal cameras. Next up, we have a Panasonic PV-GS320. This is a mini DV camera. And see here, it sports three CCDs. So it's got three, uh, three chips instead of one. I've only used this camera a few times, and I gotta tell you, the, the navigation is really goofy. Otherwise, um, from what little I've used it, uh, played with it, it's a uh, really nice camera. Sports a fake uh, focus ring. But it is all manual, manual. Next up, I have a JVC uh, model number GR SXM250U. This is a super VHS video camera with picture stabilization, TBC, and CNR. This is a camera that does work. I have not used it out in the field or anything. I have used it on the bench. And that's because, well, I need to get a new battery for it. But the camera does work. Now with the periscope. And only mono. That's the bad thing. However, I do believe they made this in stereo. And the focus ring on this is also fixed. So I'm looking forward to using this camera. This is um, this would be an awesome camera. Like I said, I've used it here on the workbench, dorking about, and it works fine. Maybe one day I'll shoot a. Um, a, um, a video using it. This camera is a Sony CCD TR91 and this is a Video 8 video camera with a really really long uh, name escapes me but it's a big one Viewfinder. There we go. I have used this camera. I've taken it out in the field and I shot video with it. I think. I've got two of these. I got this one which is stereo and then I've got the mono version. So I'm thinking I took the mono one out in the field and not this one. As you can see, it is stereo. It's a nice, chunky video camera. This is from early 90s, probably 91 or thereabout, give or take. Has some girth to it. See the handle's in pristine condition. This one's got steady shot. I, if I remember right, this is one of the earlier versions of cameras to sport this new technology, steady shot. And we got our manual focus wheel right here. 
And then another Sony. This is a CCD-TRV99. Uh, it is a uh, video, it is a Hi8 XR video camera with an awfully large wing. Paddled boat with that thing. It's humongous. But then again, so is the camera. The camera is not teed at all. As you can see there, it fills up your entire screen thing there. This is a stereo camera. I think I've used this camera, but I'm not sure. I will check my my uh, catalog of videos and um, see if indeed I've used this. And if I have, I'll make a notation in the, uh, the bottom of the screen there. And this one here has Night Shot. Since this is a earlier version, this probably came out around 2000, 2001, uh, maybe as early as 98. Um, not really sure at this point. When I buy these, I research them and then I know what time they were made, but at this moment, I don't. This is probably going to have a powerful night shot. And you see that we've got a cold shoe, which also doubles as Sony's active shoe. I believe I've shown this camera in the past. I, I don't remember, but I think I have. This is a fun camera. I enjoy using this camera immensely, and I have used it a lot. I have dang near all the accessories for it. Very cool, very cool camera. It does a, a beautiful job. Probably wondering what this is all about. Well, I keep this plastic over the eyepiece. I don't use the eyepiece, but I keep the plastic over it to help keep dust particles out of it. Uh, and that's fantastic to do, especially if you go and shoot the color run or something like that, which I've done with this camera. I also have the uh, covering for this, the rain jacket. And um, so definitely keep, keep it as uh, protected as you can. This one, as you see, is a 3CCD chip camera. It is a prosumer camera and this camera is mini DV. This does shoot uh, 720. It is a very cool camera. I have not used this camera in quite some time. This has, and if you're into bells and whistles, this, this has it. This has more junk on it than you probably will know what to do. It just dawned on me, I forgot to tell you what model number camera this is. It's a uh, Panasonic AG DVX 100B. B is in Bravo. They made a, an A version, which uh, I guess had a lot of issues, and this was uh, the resolve to it. Fun camera. Here's my microphone I have I put on this goofy thing and you probably remember this from a earlier video as well. I did a review on this thing. That's a humongous wind muff. Here is a Panasonic AG450. This is a reporter camera. I have only shot with this camera one time. I really love this camera but it does need a little help and we're gonna do a video on it at another point in time. It needs some capacitor love. The white balance on it is a little off and you're unable to um, change it with its uh, controls. So I'm thinking we got some weak capacitors. A few of you may have already spotted that yes, this is a SVHS camera. Full size videotapes. I do have a battery in there. Let's see if it, uh, it works. Nope. It's dead, so I have to charge the battery. 
really, really love this camera. What I don't like about it though is, for me, the body just is not long enough. It hits me right on my shoulder bone about here when I have it on, uh, have it up. So trying to find the shoulder pad for this is a little challenging. I do see them come up from time to time, but I find them on other cameras and I haven't been too lucky at getting somebody to just sell me that off of their camera. This is a mono camera. But if you pull audio from another source, an audio recorder, then mono stereo doesn't matter. You just need something for reference audio. And this um, definitely does, uh, does sport a onboard microphone as you're seeing here. This camera dates from about 1996, I believe, give or take. Um, and you can see the foam, we still had the foam on here. However, in a few spots it is starting to break down. This camera is SD, not HD. Shoots in 640 by 480 or 4 by 3 format. Next camera we have is a Kodak P850. This is a still shot camera, of course. But it does also include video, but it's a 640x480 or 4x3 format. It is only SD, not HD. It is a 5.1 megapixel camera. I've actually owned this camera in the past. I got rid of it. I didn't like that model, but it was one of those cameras that after I got rid of, it, um, it just kind of haunted me. And so I eventually did buy another one, which is this one right here. I have not used this a lot, but I thought this would be a cool camera to keep on my workbench to use as reference photos. Camera does shoot um, with RAW and you have all your manual controls. And that's what I liked about it. Plus we got flash control and I do have the flash. When I go, uh, when I review all these cameras, if I have any accessories with them, I'll definitely review that or demo those just the same. Has a nice big rubber ring around the barrel here. I like Kodak cameras. I have a lot of cam uh, Kodak cameras. In fact, in my collection, you're probably gonna notice I have a lot of Kodak. Olympus, Canon, uh, Sony, and that's about it. I, the heavy hitters. I, I do have other brands, um, but I, I think those are going to be the heavy hitter cameras that I have. So like I said, uh, I'm going to use this with the intent of using it as my workbench reference uh, photo camera. And that worked out pretty well for a while until I picked up this camera. And this is a Nikon S81 camera. This is a super duper cool camera. In fact, uh, it shoots uh, 1080. I believe it shoots 1080 video and um, full featured, full packed. The only thing is, is it's not manual like you have in this camera. It does have a lot of manual controls. I mean, they brought it to the point of it's almost manual and then they brought it back one notch. It's a, it's a fantastic camera. I shot a shaky cam video with it. I like the camera. I like Nikon, my primary shooter uh, shooting camera is a Nikon. I love Nikon. So I was really thrilled when I bought this camera. One more camera and then this one, this video is done. Last but not least, this camera right here is a JVC question mark, question mark, question mark. I say that because the sticker is missing and it is not stamped anywhere else that I'm, I'm aware of, that I could see. 
on uh, on the camera. Let me check the battery bay here. Nope. I will have to put that in post. What this camera is. This is a mini DV camera. It's touted as being super high band. 520 lines at 1024 by 768 on still uh, pictures. You stick a video card in here somewhere and you can take still photos. Well, right here. Really cool little camera. I have not used this outside of the house. Mainly because I need to get new batteries. The battery that I have for it is dead. But it powers it up just enough to let you know it works. Again, maybe one day I'll do a, a workbench video using this camera. In fact, I'll probably do that with all my video, with all my cameras that shoot video. Why not? Anyway, that will do it for this video. I do apologize for the length of the video, but I, it is a very large collection that I do have. And to think, this is only part one. There will probably be about three parts in this series. And they all might be about as long. So if you're into cameras, well, subscribe to my channel and when I do post, you'll be the first to know. I think you would appreciate that. My collection reprises of, reprises, comprises of, one of those words, how's that? Video and still cameras, digital and analog. When I do the big lump like this, the video collection, I'm just going to lump them all together. I'm not going to segregate them or anything like that. If you're into cameras, then you're just going to eat it all up that much more. I have a lens collection. We will do a video on that as well sometime. And a tripod collection, same thing, sometime. Okay, well, I think that'll do it for this video. Thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure a few of you salivated over it. And just as soon as I have the time, I will definitely review these cameras. I, I'm trying to make a conservative effort for my subscribers that are here for cameras to include more cameras. So all I could ask for those that are here for that, please give me a little more time and I will try to meet those needs. Anyway, that'll do it for me. That'll do it for this video. Thanks again for coming along and thank you for your continued support. Catch you in the next one. See ya.